What's going on, folks? This is Acid Roots. So I'm going to review Nicki Minaj's debut studio album, Pink Friday. Now, this came out in late 2010, but the thing about it was is Nicki had kind of made a name for herself with the number of mixtapes in the late 2000s, in addition to the Young Money album that came out in late 2009. Now, now that album, I reviewed that album, We Are Young Money. You can find it. It's from years ago. But one of the particular singles from that project that helped bolster Nicki Minaj's career at the time was the song Bedrock. A nice little pop rap number with Lloyd on the hook and just kind of a syrupy um, kind of relationship boo-booed up kind of song and that type stuff. Definite good for winter. And Nicki Minaj had a series of mixtapes in uh, the late 2000s that got her a lot of credentials, but particularly the one that broke her out the most because it was it had some original material on there was her Beam Me Up Scotty, which she re-released in 2021. So this is the first time I've talked. This is the first time I've talked about Nicki Minaj on the channel, and I need minus the Young Money project. I wanted to get more into some of her releases. I do remember this project. It is pretty stellar, and this album's going to get a pretty high score, higher than what I expected that I was going to give it. So it's pretty much damn near a classic, and I'll get into the the scope of that as far as talking about it. But the version I'm reviewing is the complete edition, which has 21 songs. So if you just buy like the CD version, the standard CD version, it only has 13 songs, but there's a number of deluxe versions that want, you know, there's a deluxe version that has 16 songs. There's a deluxe that has 18 and the complete edition has 21. So there's a lot of super versions of this project i'm just reviewing the one with the fi the final one that had all the songs on there so that's kind of the concept about it Nicki minaj at least on this album strikes me as kind of like a, a kind of alternative barbie in that type sense i can see this kind of being a project that was kind of could be sold at walmart but could also be sold at hot topic and that type stuff i just feel like some of the hooks that she was kind of giving came off as kind of a little bit with tastes of like Kelly Clarkson and Haley Williams in there. I mean, it's not entirely like that, but I just feel like she kind of was like, had similarities to the Carter three, how the Carter three kind of had that alternative kind of vibe also. So it's interesting to kind of note that, but this album did try to make some break for the mainstream also. So there are some songs on here like fly and like, there's another one on here. I can't remember, but some of these, like maybe your love it was, but fly and super bass at least. And, the song with Natasha Bedingfield all had particular um, scopes as far as trying to get towards like blue collar and mainstream. And that kind of helped bolster Nicki Minaj on her second album, Pink Friday Roman Reloaded, when she had a lot more higher charting hits and she kind of broke into the pop rap kind of field and that really catapulted her. But this is, I mean, this album really didn't sell well until like the summer of 2011 when Super Bass kind of took off as a single and that's kind of the concept the 2010 version of Nicki Minaj just kind of struck me as like a 2010s version of like Lil Kim just a hardcore rap and kind of with that uh edge of alternative in there but it you know once the 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 pop rap single started charting Nicki Minaj just had like a dichotomy of like faces I, I'm not gonna say she's two-faced because it's a positive thing and it was an a great thing but it kind of was like a dichotomy of a situation just because the 2010 Nicki Minaj was different from the 2011 one that's kind of the concept where she just broke even and it was just kind of a surprise and that type of stuff but so there's eight singles on this project which is a whopping amount four singles came out in 2010 four singles came out in 2011 so the first single is your love and this is kind of like a syrupy, real kind of boo-booed up kind of song. Definitely reminds me of something that would be great for winter. I mean, this song came out in the summer, but it reminds me more of like a winter kind of cuffing season type song. I would definitely see for it. You know, Nikki's kind of sultry in this song a little bit. It's not quite as ferocious as like a get as she can be later on, but. The thing about it was, was Drake dropped a song called Find Your Love in like the summer of 2010. And this kind of is like the answer to that. Just Nicki Minaj having the song Your Love in there. So it's just kind of a nice saccharine kind of romantic song. The second single is Check It Out. And this kind of samples like an 80s song. I, I Computer's kind of going slow. I was going to see what 80s song it sampled. But Check It Out samples like an 80s song, something like that. It really has like a nice kind of pop rap kind of feel. But I really like the kind of hook in this song. 
it just kind of it really feels like a barbie doll kind of song that type of stuff just real pink 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 type song and that sort of thing and it's interesting that will i am is on there i wasn't expecting him to kind of do that song i mean and when you get to his verse which is the second verse he almost kind of transforms it into like a minor black eyed peas song you would think because they were kind of popular in 2009 2010 that you would think for a while if you started hearing the song with his verse you might think that that was just a black eyed peas song or something but it's a nice little pop rap song kind of a club bop kind of like a nice one to kind of have there it's just really kind of cute and sweet but it is like like i said it's just a pink kind of song i kind of like it's just real effeminate and that type of stuff so i like that one and um oh yeah it's just a real kind of cute kind of song right through me is the third single and this one is kind of similar to your love but also similar to like bedrock Right Through Me is also similar similar to Bedrock. Those three songs, three songs on here are just kind of right in that winter kind of cuffing season kind of feel. Your Love's a little bit the sweeter song, but Right Through Me is kind of more of just like a mild blue collar relationship type song that you might hear on the radio when you're in the car on the way home or something. Just that kind of 4.30 p.m., 5.30 p.m. malaise i mean Nicki minaj puts a nice hook on the song she gives it like an edge to where it's not just makeshift to that degree it's just a nice touch i like that i like the concept of Nicki minaj being on makeshift songs like this because this is definitely a good one it just it would seem like it worked pretty well it didn't chart as high as like it needed to but it is a nice kind of mild makeshift and romantic relationship type song from back in late 2010 this is a 2010 single moment for life is the fourth single and this one kind of comes off as like kind of a club song but it's kind of an overcast someplace where you're going to hear music and kind of be more in like an audience this place is like if you're out at broadway in new york or something like that or just those type places just something where you're going to even walking up the streets with skyscrapers and that sort of stuff or just in buildings kind of in vip some of those type places it just feels like a song that you would kind of hear looming in the background it just has a real sprawling type feel towards it definitely like it drake did real great on the verse too he he competed with nikki real well i mean nikki's not someone the less people typically upstage her but they both these are two good lyricists on the song they did pretty nice on there and um great hook super bass is the first single from the 2011 half of the singles and this is probably the song that i think most of y'all heard from this particular project is the biggest highest charting song off the whole album on spotify it has over 600 million plays pretty uniform it's kind of makeshift i don't see it as much of a club song just because i see it as more like a song that you'd listen to at the beach it just is such a elastic and huge kind of song it, it just seems to me like a can be pg kind of party it seems just kind of like a, a party type song but it, it's kind of like a healthy kind of party it doesn't really strike me as like shots 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 like Lil john or something like that or lmfao one of those type songs this is a basic it's a it's a basic bop that i think most people should know by this stage but there's it's a basic bop by this stage. I think folks should know about this song and have it on standby as far as like a good party song, but it's just not a hardcore. It doesn't get as crazy as like party songs as far as that's kind of concerned. It's just kind of like a watered down kind of, it's a watered down kind of party song, which just kind of means that it's, it's blue collar. It's PG rated almost. It's just kind of state, you know, it's, it can be played at work. It can be played kind of at clubs is is this kind of an overcast song that was so ubiquitous that folks of all audiences could kind of mess with it but because of that it's not quite as crazy as some of the other songs on this album like did it on them for example that's the sixth single that's the next one this is kind of the closest thing this is like the most hardcore Nicki minaj club song on out of all the singles this one is probably the craziest one her just kind of going in on did it on them is probably the craziest club song out of all of these this really feels the most like a song that like lil wayne or rick ross would do or someone like that you know some of those type folks really kind of comes off as like a regular kind of club song this is like a vanilla kind of club song not quite as overcast as moment for life or quite as poppy as check it out but it's a, this is another one or as watered down as super bass but this is just kind of like standard Nicki minaj her back on her 2009 and 2008 type shit and that sort of thing i just definitely kind of feel like 
this is the sort of Nicki Minaj song that we, I mean, at least in the singles, I'm surprised that she didn't do more, but it's still a good, it's a good song. Definitely like it. Simple kind of Nicki Minaj kind of club bop. It's just interesting to kind of get it and to see that. Girls Fall Like Dominoes is the seventh single. And um, this one is kind of like an entry type club song. This is kind of the one that you'd hear right as you get there. I mean, it's not quite as good as Did It On Him, but it is a nice one. Or it's not quite as hardcore club song as Did It On Him, but it is a nice one. I would have to say it kind of reminds me of something Tayo Cruz would do. Or like David Guetta, just without all the EDM stuff. It just kind of feels like a standard 2009, 2008 type club bop that, you know, Hollywood Undead kind of did with, like, Never Let Me Down or something. I, I can't remember what that, kind of similar in the vibe to Hear Me Now by Hollywood Undead from 2011. Very similar to that one. Uh, but it's just kind of an entry club bop, kind of simple enough, nice vibe towards it, nice chorus. Nicki Minaj has some sing-songy hooks on here, so she can sing pretty well. It's another thing to note. She does it on Super Bass. She does it on Moment for Life. She does it on Right Through Me, and she does it on Girls Fall Like Dominoes. So she can handle the hooks herself. She's kind of like Drake, where she can kind of do R&B-flavored rap when she wants to. So that's another concept. It's just a nice kind of entry club bop, I would have to say. Good vibes towards it. And then the other song that was that Check It Out sample, I'm going to say that because I just went and took a look at it. So the song that Check It Out sampled was Video Killed the Radio Star, which was actually from 1979. But it's basically an 80s hit, so that's just kind of the situation. But yeah, it's just kind of... Um, so the eighth single was Fly, and this has Rihanna on here, and this was an interesting one. This was an interesting one just because this kind of felt like the most blue collar out of all the singles minus Super Bass, where Super Bass was kind of like a party song in a mild sense, just kind of a blue collar and straightforward kind of sense and a good clean kind of sense. I feel like Fly is just kind of the more makeshift the most makeshift of the songs, kind of like how Lil Wayne did the song How to Love, which was kind of a makeshift Lil Wayne song. This is a makeshift Nicki Minaj song. It's interesting that Nicki Minaj and Rihanna kind of crafted this one because it just has such a natural fit for it. It's kind of Nicki Minaj on her more watered down kind of lyrics. And it's interesting that Nicki Minaj can do watered down kind of lyrics considering her name is Nicki Minaj for Minaj a Trois. It's just interesting kind of getting her kind of being kind of straightforward and more zipped up and that's just kind of the concept about it that's just kind of the situation it's a good song for that i like all eight of the singles this is a nice one i feel like super bass and fly are the two blue collar ones did it on them and girls fall like dominoes are kind of the two main main club type joints that i would play first moment for lie or right through me and your love are kind of the like the romantic kind of relationship type songs and then moment for life and check it out are just kind of varying club bops either way i mean check it out is the more pop rap one and moment for life is the more sprawling one. So that's kind of the concept i mean nikki had a nice soaring amount i mean all of these singles are excellent it really provides such an excellent example of what to do for like an album as a debut and such just the fact that she had all those singles when most folks can't even get three or four singles is pretty damn good so I'm going to go ahead and recommend out of 21 songs, the 17 songs I recommend to you. So these 17 songs would be Did It On Em, Moment For Life, Super Bass, Your Love, Blow Your Mind, Here I Am, Save Me, Check It Out, Fly, Right Through Me, Girls Fall Like Dominoes, Roman's Revenge with Eminem, Roman's Revenge with Lil Wayne, Blazin', Money, Catch Me, and the bonus song from the Young Money album, Bedrock. That's a lot, so I'm going to talk about some of these. There are some pretty stellar type club bops on here, and I'm going to go ahead and like some extra kind of club bops on here that I feel like. I feel like Catch Me, Money, Roman's Revenge, either one, and like Save Me all kind of have like some nice kind of sprawling type club bops to them. I feel like Save Me is very similar in terms of the pitch to like Moment for Life, both of those are kind of like the overcast kind of looming ones, Moment for Life and Save Me. 
I feel like money is kind of like a crazy, this is kind of manic energy from Nicki Minaj. It was kind of surprising to kind of get that one. I just feel like the chorus is really addictive. She got a nice one on there. It's not a sing-songy one, but this is kind of like an in-between kind of album cut that just works pretty well. I would definitely get the version with this song on there. I mean, it's not as catchy as some of like her hooks that are sung, but it is a good one for a rap hook, and it's definitely a nice one. Blazin' is another one. This one has Kanye West on there, and this one's pretty similar to, um, this one's kind of similar to Super Bass and the same kind of feel towards that. This kind of a pop rap type song. I feel like Blazin' had a nice touch on there. It was a nice approach towards that, and I can try to think of some other ones. Here I Am has a really dramatic kind of feel towards it. I like this. It kind of felt mafioso in a way. It felt like something Biggie and Lil' Kim would kind of do. It was kind of surprising. This one kind of didn't fit in with the rest of the kind of pop rapish type feel towards the album. It was just kind of interesting kind of getting Nicki Minaj kind of feeling paranoid somewhat like Biggie and Tupac kind of do. So it's just interesting to kind of get that one. Definitely like the dramatic production on there. I liked Blow Your Mind. This one kind of had a rock. This one was kind of in a, a weird, this one was kind of a weird amalgamation just because it had like a rock type chorus. It just felt like something from the 70s or 80s. And then it had like this club type feel. Definitely one of the best beats on the album in the verses. It was just kind of crazy how that one kind of turned out. And it was just a great kind of vibe towards it. Definitely kind of similar to Money where it just had a lot of it's kind of similar to Money, how it had a lot of high-octane energy. Probably one of the better club cuts on here. It definitely felt like that. Just had a great type energy towards it. And um, I think that about takes care of it. I think I basically listed all the songs. That's, you know, 17 songs. That's quite a bit. I talked about eight singles and then the nine other songs that, that there kind of were. Both Roman's Revenge songs are pretty great. Eminem is back on his recovery era type stuff i mean that that's a verse from eminem from 2010 so he was in his recovery era at that time it's interesting to kind of get him on kind of like a song that's made for like a night venue and that type of stuff just because recovery wasn't chock full of those so it's interesting to kind of get that and see eminem on those type vibes and he tore apart he tore apart the verse and so did lil wayne i mean both versions of roman's revenge are great lil wayne was just in his prime at that time and he still kind of is in terms of lyrics but this is back when lil wayne was dropping classics like the carter three and the we are young well, doing great on some albums like we are young money doing great on albums like i am not a human being the carter four and the dedication for and that type of stuff around that time. So Lil Wayne was doing a lot of good stuff on there. And that he tore he tore apart the song. So yeah, I just would have to kind of say that's a lot to kind of talk about here. So in terms of what I'm going to score this album, I'm going to give this album a 9.5 out of 10. Just because I feel like if I had liked this one more song, I would have given it a 10. The four songs I didn't enjoy were I'm the Best. Dear Old Nikki, Last Chance with Natasha Bedingfield, and then Wave Your Hand. And all of these, like Dear Old Nikki and Last Chance. Last Chance was attempting to be kind of like another makeshift type song, but I kind of, that one kind of felt, Last Chance kind of felt within that pop rock type field. Natasha Bedingfield, Kelly Clarkson, Avril Lavigne are kind of good at that vibe, but I don't know how I felt about Nicki Minaj doing that. I mean, she can do makeshift type songs. I feel like her and Natasha Bedingfield made a good combination, but I don't know about the the way I have the way I felt about the production of the song. I would have liked maybe something more in the vein of like Fly or something like that. But I mean if you're looking for like a song that's kind of Natasha Natasha Bedingfield type song but with Nicki Minaj on there in the verses instead, that's kind of your song. And Dear Old Nicki, really I didn't like the production on there at all. That one's kind of the most like this more down tempo and just kind of not as uppity and my kind of vibe. I'm the best is kind of another pop rap song, but wasn't as good as Blazin or like uh, Super Bass in those type moments. So I think that one kind of needed more work towards it. I mean, it's a decent one, but I wasn't vibing with it. And then like I didn't like the beat on Wave Your Hand. I just felt like that one. It wasn't quite up to snuff with the rest of the album. So that's kind of the concept. So 9.5 out of 10. Just one more song would have pretty much put it over the edge. I would basically say this album's a classic, especially the complete edition. This is kind of saying, and to talk about the song, 
Bedrock too. That's a classic Young Money song. That's a great Young Money song. So I would definitely invest in that if I didn't talk about that in the review. I just kind of feel like that's great chorus by Lloyd, great verses by all the Young Money. They did some great stuff on there. So it's just another song. I just would get that song. I mean, if you're going to get I mean, I would just get the Young Money album because the song's on there, but if you find it on this album, it is another bonus cut to kind of have. But so, yeah, this nine and a half out of 10, basically a classic approach, just uh, packed to the gills with hits. And I was surprised at how many stepping out and kind of social moments were kind of on this album. I didn't expect it to have that many. And it's just kind of the interesting thing about it because a lot of these just kind of strike a lot of audiences, and she appeals to alternatives, she appeals to mainstream she appeals to blue collar and makeshift she appeals to like relationships she appeals to um like effeminate and girly girls and prissy girls and that type of stuff so there's just a number of angles from this particular project that just kind of get and the guests on here are pretty solid too you got eminem lil wayne drake natasha bedingfield kanye west uh, i think there's a few others will i i think i said will i am rihanna so there's just tons of folks on here that really enhance the project and they keep i mean there's not too many folks that drop features i would have liked maybe a couple more features for Nicki minaj to kind of spar with but she did at least spar with drake eminem kanye west and lil wayne so there's a couple there's just a few but this is gonna say this is plenty of stepping out moments plenty of this i would refer to the review to see some of the stepping out moments to have some good fun with that there's not really like crunchy lmfao and pitbull type craziness in terms of club cuts on here but nikki at least probably had a drink in her hand a couple of times throughout this album that type of stuff i just would say she's not a full-blown party animal but she definitely knows how to have a good time and be fun so that's kind of this concept it's not i mean i rate the craziness probably a not a few notches turned down from like Lil john or like pastor troy or walk a flock of flame or someone like that but it is quality and that's kind of the concept about it so it's not gonna i'm not gonna notch the score from nine and a half it gets a nine and a half out of ten but you just have to understand the social score i'll give a 10 out of 10 just because eight singles packed to the gills with all this stuff and there's just plenty of moments for that sort of thing plenty of stepping out moments everything just fun and about that and you know it's from probably one of the better albums i've seen in a long time from a female rapper i can't think of too many albums that would be better than pink friday right here so that's definitely kind of saying lil kim you might be in jeopardy same thing with like city girls and some of them but yeah i just would have to say um yeah, in terms of the future, Nicki Minaj is supposedly dropping an album soon enough, but then she also dropped like Queen Radio Volume 1 back in August, so there's some stuff like that, so we'll see what happens with it, but this is definitely a very state-of-the-art project.